Some pretty interesting new polling from our friends over at Morning Consult. So they showed voters a clip of Joe Biden's defense saying that um, what Tara Reid accused him of did not happen. And then they asked whether Democrats should look for a different nominee. Let's put those numbers up. So 26 percent of voters said that the Democratic Party should, in fact, select a different nominee. And again, this is after watching Biden's denial of Tara Reid's allegations. 13 percent said they're not sure, they don't know, and 61 percent said no. Um, if we dig down into the age subtabs, it gets even more interesting. So uh, Democrats under 45, 40 percent actually say yes. Democrats should be looking for a different nominee. Democrats over 45, very different story, much lower numbers there. Um, but Sagar, this is like a quarter of the Democratic Party saying they should be yeah. looking for another nominee. That's pretty sizable chunk. That's massive sire. By the way, not many people in media picked up this particular story, and I wonder why. And those <laughs> younger numbers are absolutely devastating. We already know from the College Pulse polling that you covered here on the show that, what is it? It's like 22% of young voters are either considering not voting or voting third party in right. this election. That's of college students, critical demographic to the Obama coalition. We know that amongst younger African-Americans, younger Latinos, and younger all younger Americans of all races have much less support for Joe Biden. Had He had almost zero support amongst that group during the Democratic primary. And now, during this, you can see that younger voters under the age of 45 who have very different inclinations about Me Too and about the way these stories are handled and about who should get the benefit of the doubt and are much more, I think, are much more open to the ideas that there's a lot of hypocrites out there who have misspoken and um, who have spoken differently in the past and they can very much see you. They are not happy with Joe Biden. I mean, under, I mean, almost, what is that, 45 percent of, 40 percent say yes under the age and of 45. And 18 percent say don't know. So a majority are either saying yes or right. maybe effectively there and only 42 percent, uh, you know, less than a majority there saying no. And I think you're right. I think yeah. it's about their attitudes about Joe Biden in general, and then also their view specifically of the Me Too movement. I mean, you can imagine if you're if you're an older voter, like you know, men have been getting away with this stuff for a long yes. time. Like, ah, you're kind of like right. cynical about it. You're kind of accustomed to it. It's like, yeah, we've been voting for like mm -hmm. lecherous dudes for <laughs> ages now. What's different, right? right. Young voters have allowed yes. themselves to have slightly higher expectations, which is a good thing. You know, I did a piece um, late last week essentially saying, look, Democrats, you don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. Like Joe Biden is not the, he is the presumptive nominee. He is not the actual nominee. He has not won enough delegates. Y'all are the ones that I'll coalesce behind him to make him, to anoint him as a nominee, you could certainly take it away if things are looking bad for you. This show, and by the way, total freak out meltdown that I yes. would even suggest that. Liz Brunig over at the New York Times wrote an op-ed um, suggesting the same thing. There was an op-ed in the Washington Post also suggesting, look, Biden should step aside so that Democratic primary voters can actually vote with their conscience, somebody that they feel good about, not who stands credibly accused of sexual assault. So this is an idea that has some traction, and yet there is a virulent backlash against it from Democratic establishment folks, even as the base of the party is going, hmm, maybe Maybe that's not such a bad idea. Well, and that's, I mean, that is the story of the whole primary, right? Which is that they look at their voters, younger voters and all these people with contempt. And they're like, we don't care what you want. A, most of you didn't turn out to vote the way that we, some people thought you would. So why should we care? And that's just what they're going to continue to do is yeah. that whenever younger voters don't show up to the polls, then they're just going to continue to take advantage, even if they privately do hold um, these opinions on where, but you, this is always a good barometer of where is the country. And to see that with the Democratic base, Massive red flag. Right. Well, and we were just looking at a news story that just posted from Hannah Trudeau, who's a great mm. friend of Rising, over at the Daily Beast, about how this is actually emerging as a dividing line down ballot within right. Democratic primaries, where progressive insurgents are coming out and saying, I really actually support Me Too, and I believe Tara Reid, and they are, that is starting to emerge as a dividing line and a campaign issue within some of these progressive um, primaries with these progressive Well, you surgeons. saw Shahid Buttar, Shahid Buttar, Nancy Pelosi's challenger, coming here and talking about exactly that. And it makes sense. If you're running in a Democratic primary and you see what the Democratic electorate actually thinks about this, yeah, you might maybe have some problems because 
People look at, I mean, look at Elizabeth Warren. This is a person who excoriated, we'll talk about this later, but she excoriated Michael Bloomberg on that Democratic stage, released the NDAs and all of that. She says she believes Joe Biden on Tara Reid. No, that's it. I believe, I uh, trust Joe Biden. So I, we have to look up the Not to quote. mention she was but, the one with the whole, oh, Bernie is sexist. Bernie's a sexist, you know, based on my private, uh, totally happened in right. a conversation. And, and uh, you know, yeah. bad faith actors, people like Neera Tanden, used believe women right. in that context. And now they don't Absurd, care. and now they just completely dispatch with that. I mean, we see it's like if it's so blatantly obvious, we see it. It's all these people. I mean, like Tara told us that she wrote Elizabeth Warren's campaign and that they just sent her a form letter. They didn't care. Now Elizabeth Warren said she believes Joe Biden. She even believed Julie Swetnick. She tweeted about that in September of 2018, saying, I believe Julie Swetnick, Deborah Ramirez, and Christine Blasey Ford, lumping all those together as if they all had the same amount of credibility. Okay, so that? She did. There's a tweet, September 2018, which we'll bring up with Ryan Grimm <laughs> You're the later pro in the show. Of at all, uh, I know. All I've got things. one of these. Uh, <laughs> I've got a photographic memory for this traumatic era. But <laughs> I mean, you go back and you look at this, and then you're like, okay, what happened? And younger voters in the Democratic Party, they know, and they're not going to take it anymore. They are not. Right. Those numbers, just keep your eye on them. I hope Morning Consult mm -hmm. continues to ask this question. Because, look, maybe this is it for the story. Maybe nothing more significant breaks. Maybe more allegations don't come out. Maybe this is basically where things land, in which case Biden's going to be the nominee. Right. Democrats are going to line up behind him. That's that. But if these, if, if more comes out and these numbers really start to move, then I think you will start to hear some rumblings from more mainstream players about other potential alternatives. Yeah, so I think that's something right. to keep an eye on. All right, we're going to have more rising for you after this.